This is the plaintiff, Anissa Berry. She says she rented a room in the defendant's house. There was a gas leak in the house, and she could have been killed because she was using a portable heater to warm her room. She inhaled toxic fumes for over a week, and when she moved out, the terrible defendant refused to give her back the $4,200 she's owed. That's why she's suing. This is the defendant, Catherine Marcus. She says the plaintiff's a total drama queen who is greatly exaggerating the electrical issues in the house, which were minor according to her electrician. She never intentionally put anyone in harm's way. The woman owes her rent, and she thinks her lawsuit is just a way of attempting to get back at her. She's accused of causing a gassy situation. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $900 for unpaid rent. All parties, please shake your right hand. Be seated, come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're Anissa Berry, yes. you are suing Catherine Marcus, your former landlord. Former, yeah. right? You moved out? Yes. Okay, for $4,200 that you say she owes you, and you want her to pay you back. What's going on? Um, so I moved into her property September 1st, 2018. And this is in where? This is in Los Angeles. Okay. And for the first couple of were months... Were you renting a room or renting the whole apartment? I was renting a room. Okay. And you were paying how much? 900 a month. Okay. So for the first couple of months, things were fine. It was warm outside. My room seemed very insulated. It wasn't until late November, the landlord moved out to, to go to another state. So someone else moves in. Um, I am not well educated in construction. Um, I did notice a spark in the kitchen earlier on, but what I didn't What do you mean by I noticed a spark? A spark in the outlet that was behind a microwave. So, okay. Um, when, and when did the spark occur? When it was being plugged in? When it was being unplugged? When, when it was being unplugged. Okay. And so the, someone else moves in. This person's a little more talkative. I would see her in common areas. And uh, we end up forming a relationship, a friendship. And so she is well-versed in construction. That is a part of her past background. She said it is not OK that there is a spark. So there was one portable heater for the entire house. Why? I, why? Um, well, did the heat not work in the place? The heat worked on the side where the sublet was, where I had resided for the past three years. All right, so the heat works in part of the house, but not her part? In the past, people who've lived on the side where Anissa was living used space heaters with no problems. So that was... But that's and, not and, how you're supposed to rent your places out, and you know that California is one of the strictest states about stuff like that. So was the heater broken on that side? I was told those were inoperable units. Inoperable. Yeah. So yeah, broken. Yeah, yeah. So he was so broken. I, you never. The heater was broken. And you never replaced I, I it. I did or not fixed have it. the money to fix okay. it. Okay. Got it. Space so now heaters. go on. What happens? Um, so there was one portable heater, and the other tenant had issues with how cold it was getting in the house for her. She's much more sensitive to the cold than I am. So I told her, okay, well, um, the landlord left a portable heater in the front. She told me I could use it, so maybe you can take it to the back and use it since you're having a lot more trouble with the cold. So she took it to the back, um, and eventually she stopped using it because she said that the hot outlet on the other side of the room was hot to the touch. I said, okay, well, can you, do you know what that means? And she said, that means that it's ungrounded. So I look up what ungrounded means, and it can cause an electrical fire in the walls. And I become very suspicious about the other outlets in the house. OK. Um, so what do you do? So we emailed. We, well, first, verbally, uh, I spoke to the landlord. Um, nothing changed. So I called uh, an electrician, and he looks at all the outlets in the house, and he explained to me that some of the outlets were ungrounded. So did he write down what his impressions were? Yes, he did. Perfect. Hand me his impression. Okay. After my evaluation, the electrical panel is obsolete and undersized for the use of the electrical space heaters. It is also a ground, there are also grounding issues in some of the outlets. Grounding is a safety issue. All right, so he charged $399. Who paid that? I did. Okay, so you're also suing for that because you felt that you needed to hire an electrician to find out what's going on because there's all these problems going on. And the one uh, she had. I tend to agree with you on that. 
All right. And so he tells you that it's not grounded. And then what happens? You decide um, you're going to leave. You don't want to live there. Um, but before then, I also wanted to hear from the gas company because we'd been experiencing a few headaches in the house. And I'm not When you say headaches, do you mean that? How do you mean that? You mean literally headaches? Like literally a headache. Okay. At this point, it's what day? This point is early January. Okay. And you leave like right after that? Yes. Okay. So what day do you call the gas company? I think it was this, either the second or the third. And what day do you move out? I moved out on the fourth. Okay. So you move out within 48 hours of the gas company going there. What did the gas company tell you? There was a leak in a, a small carbon monoxide leak. Okay. And you end up leaving right away without a month's notice because, fill that sentence because up. Because there was a series of unfortunate events that no one should go through. There was an intrusion in the house. Oh, um, tell me about that. On Christmas Eve, December 24th, um, I was expecting for the her electrician she hired, the landlord's electrician she hired, to come over. And, uh, and I you was were behind. expecting Santa Claus? And, <laughs> ho, and ho, what'd ho. you get instead? <laughs> what I got instead was a guy who jumped the wall uh, to the backyard. He banged on all of the windows, yelling something. I can't even remember. What time of the day or night was this? It was about 12 o'clock. Of the d and, During the day. During the day. And I'm thinking what to do, what to do, and immediately I went to my room to get my phone because I wanted to videotape everything that was happening. That's funny. I would think that I was about to get robbed and call the police. Well, she, by that time... Okay, you knew this was somebody who wanted, who was, who was going to occupy one of the bedrooms, right? No, 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 no. Okay. My, the other tenant was with me. So you're doing exact, you're, what you just said is exactly what she did. She had her phone already on her. And so she's calling 911, and while she's calling 911, I went to my room to get my phone. So 911 was on the phone majority of the time. Okay, who day. did the guy turn out to be? The guy turned out to be a person who our landlord said would sleep in the front room. Had she told you the person was coming? She told me that um, a person was going to come in, that it was a man. And I reminded her that when I moved in, she said no men were going to be staying there. Hold on a second. Hey, what? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, girl, Is this? Sub front, that is the other tenant. That's not you. No, I'm videotaping. So anyway, it got nasty like this predictably when the <laughs> it was nasty <laughs> for. All right, we're ready. All right, all right. Hey, everybody. Hey, okay, I don't want to live here. All right. Um, tell me about the road trip. You're suing for $200 for road trip funds. Um, I told the landlord that I would help her move her things to Dallas. I would drive her. Before any of this happened in September, that's what that's I said. That's weird. So you guys got along just famously before this. Oh, yes. All right. You what do you think has been going on over there. You think this new tenant has poisoned her head. Basically. Yeah, because Basically. you guys used to get along just fine. In we fact, got, you took a road trip. She was like a little sister to me. OK. And I lent her books, DVDs, uh, we emails back and forth, YouTube. It was all cool. And uh, I want to indicate that the person was in the sublet section, which I had lived in up until she moved in. So mm -hmm. the whole time she's talking about, I was living there. Why would I put myself in a dangerous situation? I used... Well, you might. I don't know you. <laughs> and um, people do that all the time. The question is just... I would never do that. Right. Well, and well the... but, but you are aware now that there's an electrical yes, issue. Yes. I'm, right. I'm aware. I'm aware. And also, but... they ended up calling um, the gas company, and the gas company tagged it. No. So, uh, so they tagged units I already knew didn't work when I moved in. It's a condition called smothering flame. So I knew about those units. They, 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 didn't, they tagged the oven, which wasn't even plugged in, which has never had any problems. 
The only problem I was initially aware of with the electrical was a light switch plate in the kitchen the subway right. person told me about. All right, but should she have to use a space heater? Is that okay for you to demand? Well, she didn't want to use the space heater. I had heaters dropped off. Nobody wanted to use them, and they didn't tell me I right away. I wouldn't use a space heater. Well, there was no sparking on her side of the house, and I'm sure she can attest okay. to that. Okay, do you think that that is comfort? That the fire that's gonna kill you is just gonna start in the other side of the house? That's not, that's not comforting. Welcome back to the People's Court, Harvey Levin here. So, if a tenant doesn't have heat, is that tenant allowed to withhold rent until the heat's fixed? Um, I think yes, because um, it's the apartment that they gave them. Well, and they rented it, uh, but what, what if it's not super cold out? Do you, can you still withhold rent? I don't think so, because that's the service they're paying for in the rent, so. So if it's, like, suppose it's just decent weather, but there's no heat. Can you withhold rent? I mean, I think so, because that's what you're paying for in an apartment, so. Fair enough, going inside the courtroom. So you do now know there are electrical problems that need to be addressed? I know I need to upgrade the panel, yes. So now you are you want complete rent rebate. That's what you're asking for. You're asking for the amount that you paid the, the electrician. And your, the road trip funds again are what? What were you going to get paid? Were she going to pay for your gas? What was the She agreement? was going to take money off of my rent. How December. much money was she supposed to take off we of your rent? We didn't come to that yet. It was in good faith, and I was naive at the moment. That's not called good faith. That's called stupid. If you have, if you expect X, say it because otherwise you're not gonna be able to enforce sex. That okay. makes it very hard, all right? What I'm gonna do now is do a little rough justice. Number one, I find that you are entitled to the $400 for the electrician because the electrician did find that there were numerous electrical problems throughout and I know that's why you moved out. You moved out because of the sparks, you moved out because you didn't have heat and I don't like the fact that you don't have heat. I don't think you're allowed to rent out to her and not have heat and say, well, she could have used a space heater but she chose not to, that's not really appropriate. How inappropriate is it? Is it $900 a month inappropriate? No, it's not, okay? Particularly when I know that you were giving the heater to the other person because you just weren't even that cold. All right, I, I got it, okay? Um, rent back from September to, through December, all of it? No, you're not entitled to all of it. When was the first time that you complained about needing heat? December. Okay, and the last time you paid rent was December, correct? Yes. Okay. I find that you're entitled to a $100 rebate for December. Uh, actually, I'm gonna make it a $200 rebate for December's rent. I find that you're entitled to the $400, that's $600. You are suing for January rent. Uh, by the way, there's no security deposit in this case, right? No, she it was returned. returned. It. You returned this? I returned it, yes. So then why are you suing for January's rent if you feel that that was owed to you? It was, it was my duty as landlord to return it to her. No, it's not. If out. somebody owes you January rent, it's your prerogative as a landlord to keep the security deposit for rent and just follow what the law that's says you're supposed to do when you choose to do that. Usually that's send a letter with an X amount of time certified to tell them you didn't pay January rent. But you didn't feel like you were entitled to January rent. That's why you returned the security deposit. You got back your security deposit, right? Yes, I did. All right, so, you, and you're suing for January rent and I'm not gonna find in your favor of, uh, on that. Um, particularly since she moved out like on the 4th and on the 2nd it was you know, deemed by the electrician to be a problem and no. Um, so. On your counterclaim, zero. On your claim against her, I'm gonna find that your suit for the road trip funds is absolutely impossible to enforce because you left it up to complete fate. So there's no road trip funds. There is the $400, and I find a rebate in your favor in the amount of the 200 for a net judgment in your favor on your lawsuit against her in the amount of 600, and on her counterclaim against you, zero. Good luck, folks. Well, the plaintiff is going to get money back, not the full $4,200 she was suing for. You didn't get anything in your I'm counter star I'm starstruck. My dad and I used to watch you when I was a child. <laughs> and it's his birthday today. He really? passed in 89. So just to meet you is an honor. Oh, my I goodness gracious. I just have Christ. to say that. Keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you very much. I'm sorry you didn't get anything for your, for your lawsuit, fine. but you've learned something from this, I yeah. presume. All right. Thank you okay, very, very much. Thank you. Okay. All right, Miss Barry, you don't look very happy. No, I'm fine. You are? Yeah. I'm you okay. are very good, Lenica, I must say. You told a compelling story. Sorry I couldn't get all your rent back, but that 
just didn't happen. Well, I'm glad I got to tell the story, and I'm happy all this is over. And you're okay now where you're living? No, I'm totally safe. Um, That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm safe fine. and I'm comfortable. So okay, good. It Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Okay, you must sign some documents that way. Harvey? Okay, there's something in every lease called a warrant of hab warranty of habitability. Even if it's not written there, it exists. And part of that is you have a right to heat. And if they don't have heat in an apartment, you can take steps either deducting or even withholding rent until it's fixed.